It is update time. 24.1 is now available to update from your Creative Cloud desktop app. And there's some new refreshed panel looks and some presets that I think you're going to be very excited about and a brand new update to text space editing, which I think you're going to love. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Get unlimited stock media by going to storyblocks.com slash premiergal. More on them later. First off, if you haven't installed 24.1 yet, you can access all these features currently in the beta app, which you can get from the Creative Cloud desktop app. I think we can all agree that the sequence presets that were given in the older versions of Premiere Pro have been a bit outdated. There were presets for AVC HD, for DV, for HDV, and if you don't know what DV is, it's basically those magnetized tapes that were used in the early 2000s. So in 24.1, we're given a whole new set of presets that are not outdated and it's simplified. For those of you that have been following me for a while now, you know that I've been a big supporter of Mogertz. And when the Essential Graphics panel was released about six or seven years ago, it was kind of clunky. It had these big folders and you had to open them up to browse the different Mogertz. Now the issue with this was that what if you had thousands of Mogertz? You can't remember what you called them. So it became a little bit difficult to find and organize the Mogerts. Now they did add manage additional folders from the hamburger menu in the Essential Graphics panel, but that user interface was kind of hidden. So to fix these issues, 24.1 has a more easy to use and intuitive interface. So as you can see here, there's a local templates folder, which you can have turned on. You still have access to the libraries, of course, but you can add your own folders here. So you can see that in addition to local templates, I've added lower thirds and messages. So anywhere on your computer, when you press the add button, you can go in and add a folder of Mogerts that you have. So I have a couple custom Mogerts that Submachine uses to create my captions, so I can add that in here. So after we uncheck this, if we go down and select a Mogert, when we select one, it'll highlight which folder it's in. So this is a karaoke Mogert that I use with my Submachine plugin, so it highlights that. And if I highlight the sponsored lower third that I have here, it says, oh, it's in the local templates folder. If I wanna move this, I can move this into lower thirds. And now when I select this, it'll indicate that it's inside of lower thirds. You can completely reorganize all of your Mogerts into these new folders, and you can always collapse this if it feels like it's getting too long. So in terms of installing your Mogerts, one of my favorite places to download Mogerts is Storyblocks. You can search their library for unlimited templates. For example, if we wanted some new lower thirds, we can search right here. And over here on the left, you can make sure to just download Premiere Pro. Let's say that we like these liquid motion titles. We can just click on download and there's a couple ways that you can install it. For here, of course, we can go into Mogert and you can actually take all of these and drag and drop them into the essential graphics panel. But because of the new organizational structure of adding folders, we can actually just pull up our lower thirds folder that is here linked inside of essential graphics and we can drag in these Mogerts into this folder. And here they are automatically installed here inside of our essential graphics panel. And we didn't have to drag them in. We just moved them into the folder on our computer, which is linked here into our lower thirds folder. I think that's super cool. And better yet, you can actually use the Storyblocks plugin here, this panel to search for templates directly inside of Premiere Pro. And better yet, you can go down here to sort by trending now or most recent because Storyblocks has made an effort to commission new projects from different graphic and motion design artists based on the requests that you make. Let's try out this podcast screen Mogert. So let's click on download. And now that it's downloaded, I can take these podcast Mogerts and drag and drop them here into the essential graphics panel. And here we have our new podcast Mogerts installed from Storyblocks. Another tip I have is if you click on add an additional folder, Inside of your Mogerts folder here, you can click to add a new folder, let's say a new podcast category, create, and now we have a new podcast category. And what we can do is we can take these different podcast templates here, just press shift to select all five of them here, and we can drag and drop them into the podcast category. So now if we deselect local templates folder and select podcast, 
we only get the Mogerts inside of that category. You can always right click on any of these categories to rename it, remove it, or reveal it in the finder. So for using Storyblocks assets, you don't have to worry about any copyright issues because everything is 100% royalty free and it whitelists your YouTube channel so you don't have to worry about any claims and the clear cut licensing can give you a peace of mind. And it's important to mention that when you subscribe to Storyblocks, you also get unlimited access to stock video, music, sound effects, and templates for different types of programs. There's After Effects, there's Premiere Pro, and they recently added DaVinci Resolve templates. So I know a lot of you that still use Premiere Pro and also use DaVinci Resolve, so you get the best of both worlds. To get started with unlimited stock media at one set price, head on over to storyblocks.com slash premiergal. And now let's get back into the updates. In terms of text-based editing, there's now filler word removal. So if you have any ums or uhs or any unrecognizable jargon that you say in an interview, or if you're editing a video of a YouTube video, that can be automatically removed and also removed from the timeline. So let me show you how this works. So go up to window and go to the text panel. And you can see that Premiere Pro has automatically generated a transcript of this video inside my timeline. One quick little tip here, if you go up to preferences and go to transcription, here you can have Premiere Pro automatically transcribe clips, but you can choose to only transcribe clips that are inside of a sequence in your timeline. I prefer to have this one because then it just limits the activity to just that clip inside of the timeline. If you have any filler words inside of the transcript, you will see that there will be something called filler that's in brackets. So if you click on that, it'll take you to that moment. And then from up here, you can go to filter filler words, and then you can choose to delete these filler words. And look at that, it deleted all of the filler words in my timeline and created cuts, which is just fantastic. It can help you speed up the editing process. Another thing that you can do that you may have not known is if you go into your transcription view options again and show pauses, and then you can choose the pause length. Now pauses are just when Premiere Pro doesn't detect any speech at all, but these are basically pauses that don't have any filler words in it. So if that is turned on here, which we already have, you can also go to filter pauses and you can delete all of them. So there weren't a ton of pauses here, but you can see that there are more cuts made. And if you prefer, you can just watch back your footage and make cuts the traditional way, or you can go up here and you can just select the text that you don't want and you can choose to lift or extract this from the timeline. And the comma is the shortcut for extracting from your timeline. So I think this is really useful for starting the rough cut. A lot of people haven't even started taking advantage of the text panel, but I think it's great for longer talking head YouTube videos as a starting point. You can visually see if somebody did multiple takes of something that they said, so you can you know, highlight all of the first 10 takes and delete them because usually the last one is the best, but I still recommend you watching through. I wouldn't say use it as a shortcut to not view the footage, if you know what I mean. There's a couple short updates to import and export modes. Inside of import, they've added cloud category. So if you use iCloud, uh, Google Drive, or for example, Dropbox to store footage, I use Dropbox. I can go into my Premiere Gal Dropbox and select footage here to then start my project. So that's always nice rather than going to your local sources of footage. If we click on export, you can now see that they added these new carrots here, like disclosure tabs. Before it was just all listed here. And you can choose if you wanna publish it to TikTok, for example, directly from Premiere Pro or any of these other social platforms. This was a very small update, but just these little tiny things help you as a user to close up certain things that aren't really necessary to your workflow. There's another thing that's coming. It's not in 24.1, but it's in beta right now. And it's this little share button. Now, if you click on share, you can now invite people to edit this project. Now this is inviting the same way as you would to a team project. So you can click on invite and you can send the project to any email associated with a Creative Cloud account and they can be added to the project. So this is very useful if you work with teams. Another thing that might be useful to more of you who work with clients is share for review 
the current sequence that you have selected. So this text panel demo sequence that I have selected, you can see it's already been added here and you can sign into your Frame.io account and generate a link and send it off directly from the share tab. And this avoids having to go up to window, go to review with Frame.io and log into the panel there. This is just more of a quick access, share the project with a team member or share it for review with a client. Also, if you didn't know with Frame.io, when you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account, you get 100 gigabytes free with your Adobe Creative Cloud email. So if you haven't set that up yet, I would definitely take advantage of that. I know me and my team use that. And if you ever need to free up space, you can always go and delete older projects and then upload new projects for review. If you wanna read more about these updates, I put a link down in my description box that goes straight to the official Adobe release notes, which is useful. And if you wanna learn more about AI generative fill in Photoshop and Premiere Pro, you can click right over here. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!